All right, all right, all right. Our friend Money Man, our friend Kevin, sent me a message that says, Hey, Jesse, was wondering if you can react to these two videos at once and do a breakdown on autotune. Also, can you explain how it's different from when he uses it today? Yes. Yes, we can. <laughs> Let's check this out. Uh, so Kevin sent me Chris Brown, yeah, three, three times. Yeah, three times. Uh, Carpe Diem Tour. And also Beautiful People from the same one. And I have no idea what I'm walking into, if I'm being perfectly honest, because... The auto tune has changed. This must be like an old tour or something. Um, then, yeah, we can definitely talk about it, man. I actually am working on a project right now that I specifically did to show y'all because I started working with some of the 3D reverb vocal effects that uh, oh, I can't remember the producer's name that uh, was talking about it on Instagram. But I started playing with a whole bunch of them, man. It's really, really, really interesting. So absolutely, we can do this. Let's go. Let me pull this up. Let's watch this. It's a quiet one. Big launch, man. Right out of the gates, I'm gonna say that I think that Chris is a better singer today. That's gonna, uh, that's what I think is the biggest thing that we're hearing right now. Like they might have the actual saturation or like the mix of the auto tune turned up higher than normal, but I honestly think that what we're hearing a lot now, because when he's hitting the notes like really, really, really clean, that it, it it sounds like synthesized. It still sounds similar to like what we used to hear, um, or like I guess what we now hear in the new stuff. Uh, it's when he's doing like in between notes and he's like going up to a note it like bends up right and that's that artifact that i'm always looking for when he's singing and you can hear it in his runs too like if the run isn't clipping into place harder than the auto tune is working then you're going to hear the auto tune more right um this also could be depending on what year this was this could be what's called an off the console mix and you're kind of at the mercy of what's loudest on stage is the quietest in the mix and when you're at big events like this that doesn't really play into it but what some people don't understand is like how much higher you need to have a vocal mixed above the rest of like the instrumental or the track or something in a live scenario like that to actually get it to be present and forward if you can't fix it after the fact. So we could just be hearing like a really, really, really clear take of Chris's voice with that like auto tune or like an older auto tune plug in. Or like I said, if he, um, is like a, a cleaner singer on stage. Now I'm not trying to like take away from him because he's a killer. He's always been a killer singer. Um, it's just like if he's if it's easier for him today, then you won't hear the auto tune as much. And if if the auto tune's working a little bit more back like during this time, then you'll hear it a little bit more. And if like I said, if there is like some sort of a weird camera feed or a mix feed, like just a left and right that was broadcast, and that's the recording we get, chances are the vocal is going to be the highest thing on stage. Because um, contrary to the loudest thing on stage would be the quietest in the mix, quietest thing on stage would be the loudest in the mix, and that's usually a voice because I don't have an amplifier. I have the microphone, which goes into the console. So anyways, that's my um, initial thoughts, but we'll see. That was a pretty clean one. Come on, y'all. See, there's just like a little flutter in it. And again, like if I could like empathize with him, it's probably because he's excited, man. Like this crowd hasn't settled down once. This song was huge, 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 huge. I didn't know this is what it was called. Uh, I guess it'd be yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, that, I wouldn't be surprised if it was like adrenaline making that, making him make that tuner work harder. <laughs> Bring him to me. 
Man, how do you not move? There's also um, that voice, that track voice. I think there's a couple of them that are a lot more prominent than the majority of them. And I think that they're like doubling with Chris's voice. Because if he sings exactly what it is, it's going to, um, I think it adds, uh, it'll add up to six decibels. So like if you just like take a, like a recording and just copy paste, or if like I took his channel and just duplicate it over to the next one, it was exactly the same. It would boost it by like 6 dB. It's not double, but like up to 6 dB because it's not the same take as the one that's recorded. Um, but if he's getting close enough to it and if that auto-tune is the same setting or the same sound as the one before too, then that'll give you like a doubled, doubled effect too, which could make it just sound like it's got more auto-tune to it. Come on, man. And then now I think at like in that part there, they might have even turned back how much of his natural voice is there. Like it's on the new ones and I'll show you all one day. There's like a mix, right? So you, like I usually have it at 100%. That means that uh, you can hear 100% of the sounds, but you can back that off. So it becomes like a blend, right? Like maybe it's like a 70% blend. And I think they just like wherever they had it before, say if it was like 60%, I think they boosted it at the end here or um, for this section. He might be playing with it too. Yeah, it's really synthesized. Cool. Yeah, that's cool, man. Dearly beloved, if this love only exists in my dreams, don't make me. Cool, man. Yeah, I dig it. I dig it. That's a, That was a lot of what I think is going on, but I, th I think it's just more, in one way or another, I think it's just more of the auto-tune. If you want like to check something out, um, look up Joyner Lucas performing Ramen and OJ at like whatever his festival is called, uh, Joyner Fest or something like that. He's wearing like an orange and blue jacket. Um, and uh, you hear him get lost in the uh, uh, adrenaline of the moment. Like he starts like, like, on the record, it's a C minor scale that he's following. Did do do did do do did do do. But he starts getting hype and he's like rapping and he's like way above where the pitch would be. And it's like I don't know how to describe it. It's almost like a yell or like a like a commanding, right? But then when he tries to get back down into the key signature, the auto tune's fighting him, right? Like he almost can't find where that pattern is again, even though he came out with it. Um, and that would be like the opposite side of it, where there's more auto tune than your voice and like you're just clipping into places trying to find like how to make it respond the way you need it to respond right so that would be like a different extreme if that makes sense but like it is it might be cool to like kind of check out if you're into that kind of thing um because honest god i think joiner came out i think it was his intro track he walks out the adrenaline happens he starts getting hype and he leaves that that melody or that cadence and then coming back to it is like a pain in the ass because the auto tune's weird right but anyways 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 so this is beautiful people now from the same tour Okay, has some bangers. Oh, 
see the second one of those had a wobble to it. That's you can just hear the auto tune happening. So I just think that like because the say the third one and the fourth one were real clean. That's where I'm saying like I think he just sang those ones better, right? So if he went oh, oh you hear how much like movement I have, right? And if I did it again, I'd probably be able to recreate it a little cleaner, right? And if I had auto tune on, you'd hear it clip into place. So listen to that again. Listen to that again. Little wobble. Little wobble at the bottom, but clean up top. Very clean. Look at these outfits look low too, man. That one is a doubler. So by doubler, I mean that he sang like you know that a pre-recorded version like play, and then he sang it slightly like behind. It's, it feels like he's kind of sitting into a pocket a little more, um, and you can just hear the syllables just cross a little bit. And so that's why I don't think that something changed in his vocal. I think that another one came in. Poor joints, y'all. See, like, I almost wonder if they have like a producer riding the auto tune fader and like. So, like, if when I was a sound guy full time, like, w with the artists that I worked with, that I was like producing, quote unquote, just live all the time, I knew all the cues. Like, I knew when Mike was not singing so that I could bring the delay in, and I knew when he'd come back in so I could take the delay out, right? And you can do that through what's called side chaining a compressor now, but like we used to do that manually. And I wonder if they have someone just running Chris's voice because, like, when he does like the ho, oh, you think you would hear like the whole like scale of the auto-tune run but you don't and, and his voice distorts too which um auto-tune isn't great at handling either like it just it shows more harmonics so like i wonder if they have someone running like you call it like running a fader but like being just chris's vocal sound guy and then someone else doing like the beat like it could even just be whoever the house person is or whoever the is in is running the whole thing if chris is just the one artist this is one of his tours though right i don't know i don't know it's interesting though, man. I would say that like my biggest my biggest things are I feel like there's more auto tune, and I feel like today Chris is a better singer. I think those are the two things that we're hearing. And not to mention like when you f I don't know what year this was. Does it say? Uh, it was uploaded ten years ago. So like auto tune in the last couple of years has gotten like especially with AI and stuff like you can tune some pretty crazy things and not notice right so like it just might sound a lot more organic now too and i do remember in like 2014 or somewhere in there i remember when autotune started like coming around live more op often and we were always like i don't know man and then uh, there was a time where like we never used it but like word on the street was like it worked really good so 
I don't know, man. Maybe we're just seeing like a history of some production like growth. I do think that we're seeing a little bit of Chris growth. Yeah, man. We're going to have to play with this one day. Lasers are wild, y'all. That's like Mortal Kombat. Come on now. Oh, shit. Chris is a nerd, isn't he? Someone told me there was a nerd once, I think. Someone let me know. Someone let me know. Cool, man. I also didn't know that was just like a Chris song. I thought maybe like a Chris feature or something, but here we are. Okay, man, what'd you think? Did we talk enough about the auto-tune? <laughs> I like that's that's the tough thing like unless I was in the room it's really hard to say what exactly happened like like the the purpose for it or the reasoning or like how they achieved it could be you know like a handful of things or reasons um usually it's like to create saturation to make the vocal like big and present um to make some of the like those big still notes stand out and be exciting because you're adding like harmonics to them and you're making them more exciting than just a big still note. Um, and sometimes you need that on top of these like big, almost like encompassing beats that Chris has, right? And um, so like, I wouldn't be surprised if today they used the autotune more for like a saturation and back then, like it, it had a tone, like it had a sound for like that kind of era, right? Um, Nonetheless, nonetheless, I'm, I'm jumping around on a whole bunch of points here. Um, but I do think that a big part of it is I think Chris is a better singer today. I think like that's just that is what it is. But I mean, like fast forward 10 years, man, everyone's going to get better, right? So let me know. Uh, let's plan something on uh, Patreon. I'll have the little thing and we can talk about what day we want to do it. And then uh, I'll jump on YouTube live and we'll play with my auto tune and all that stuff. We'll, I'll make a fool of myself and uh, we'll have fun with it. We'll see you on the next one.